let the Lord bring about a turnaround in that condition. When the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, the hand of the Lord lifted Elijah ahead of Ahab. Let the hand of the Lord be laid upon you right now. Let the Lord talk that situation. Ask him. Talk that situation. It looks impossible, Lord. But with God, all things are possible. I believe, Lord. I believe. Talk that situation, Lord God. Right now. Right now. Right now, touch that situation, Lord. I want you to just talk to him. Talk to him. Don't sit here. Just talk. Just touch, touch that situation. I want to hear from you. Touch that situation, oh Lord. It looks impossible. That situation looks impossible, but Lord, I know that if you touch that situation, it will be possible. That, is, that man came to Jesus, Matthew 8. He just, Lord, just speak the word. I know when you speak the word, my servant will be healed. Just speak the word. It's your faith now. It's your faith. You must pay, pay attention. It's your faith now. Touch that situation, Lord. That's why you are here today. You want an encounter with the Lord. Ask him. Touch that situation. Lord, I thank you. Begin to thank him. I believe, Lord, it is done. I believe it is done. Thank you, Lord. So shall it be. Amen. Please take your seat. In the house of the Lord, anything can happen, especially for those that believe. What is therefore important is that your focus will be on the Lord when you are in His presence. You know, you can be in God's presence and yet not be touched by God. And the only reason you cannot, you will not be taught by God when you are in God's presence is when your mind is not with God. So let's focus on him because something good will happen to you today. Amen. And it's already happened. Sister, you know you have a very good point. I was looking for her voice when I was worshiping God. And I, you see, and I know that she's talented and she's anointed by God. And I pray that what the Lord has began in your family, you will accomplish it. Amen. You know, it's not. All the time that the man of God meets some people in the world. I hope not. And I pray for you that you will not miss it. Yeah. I thank you, the Anya was right. It will quit. Yeah. <laughs> you are welcome. Thank you. I will see you later after the service. Amen. Amen. For, him, for the rest of us, let's focus on today. Let's receive the word of God today. When the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, be you imitators of God. Be you imitators of God. Walk in love. Just as Jesus loved us. 
Then the question is, how can you and I imitate God? Is it even possible to imitate God? Yes. We'll find out. Because I can imitate you. You can imitate me. So it is possible to imitate God. If I like the way you sing, and I love the song you are sang, I will go on and copy you. Is that not possible? How can we imitate God? Because God has given us the ability to imitate whatever we want, whoever we want to imitate. Even God. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. And they took, the scripture says, and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. The New King James Bible says, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. But in the other translation, it says, and they took note that this man, Peter and John, had been with Jesus. So there is a judgment call here based on information that they have seen. It's one thing to take note of someone, and it's another to know who they have been with. So can you and I imitate God? Yes. Can people see you and know who you have been with? Yes. Because they can see. So how did they arrive at that judgment? That's what we want to look at. To take note of someone and then make the judgment call that they resemble somebody. They just took note of them and they concluded, they deduced that they have been with Jesus. So it must have been from what they saw. And then they concluded. My prayer is that when people begin to see you, they will see Jesus in you. Another translation says, and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. Another translation of the Bible says, they recognize them as companions of Jesus. And that's the one I will take today. They recognize them as companions of Jesus. When I check the dictionary, a companion is a person or an animal with whom you spend a lot of time with. So to put it literally, if you spend your time watching TV most of the time, is TV not your companion? Hello? By comparison, by extraction of that definition, if your mobile phone, you are always with your mobile phone all the time, has that not become your companion? And what about if you spend your time reading the Bible most of the time? Would that be your companion? So I believe I'm painting a picture of it. And for you at home as well. Whatever you spend your time with most of the time is your companion. The bottom line, the bottom line there is time. Companions spend time together, true? Yes. 
You spend a lot of time together with your fiancé or your friends. You spend your time together, a lot of time together as often and once. What do they talk about? We'll come to that later. But then, because by definition, a companion or companions spend a lot of time together, I believe, therefore, when they saw Peter and John, they recognized, they took note of them, that they are companions of Jesus. This is what companions do. They keep each other's company. They talk together. They eat together. They dine together. They walk together. They chat together. And if they are married, they romance. Today's title is Be a Companion of Jesus. Amen? Be a companion of Jesus. Because in this month, we have been looking at ways we can imitate God. We've been looking at ways we can intentionally imitate God. How can you, at the back of your mind, each day, you intentionally imitate God. How can you each day read the Bible intentionally? How can you each day pray to the Father, your Father in heaven, intentionally? Even pray for those who persecute you. How can you begin to do this if you are not a companion of Jesus? There's no one that do this that will not keep the company of Jesus. Jesus said, when he introduced himself to the people, he said, you have heard that love those who love you and hate your enemies. But I, he said, I say to you, if you love those who love you and hate those who hate you, are you different from the hypocrites? He said, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Then he got many people attention. Because it only takes someone that is intentional about God to obey him. In other words, Jesus is saying that you have to go extra mile for people to know who you really are. It's okay to flow with the flocks. But you have to stand out. Let Christ be seen in you. Let the word of God that you've been hearing be seen in your action. Those are the ones that have a companionship with Jesus. That is what imitating God is all about. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when you pray, Jesus said, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. It was a motive. If you come to church, but you're with the wrong motive, 
Even though you are in God's presence, nothing will happen to you. But if your motive of coming to church is to worship God, to hear from God, you might be the only one that will not go back and say, Okay, no, because you are drawn from the Lord by faith. God sees the heart. The heart is very important. We can decorate the body to make people. It's a passe, isn't it? You can decorate the body and make people think more than who you are, you know? But you yourself know. But the one that keeps complaining that has become a companion with Jesus will always have the right motive. I'm doing this intentionally to pray for you, even though you do not like me, but I'm still going to pray for you. It takes somebody that is intentional about God to call the people that you know despise you, they persecute you, they talk evil against you, but you don't talk evil about them. You pray for them. You do as if you do not know. It takes grace to do that. And that's how you and I can imitate God. So you can see it's possible. Is it doable or not? It is doable. But how many people are doing it? Verse 6. But you, don't stop and say, but you. Who is you? You. Who is you? You. Is it? But you, when you pray, He's telling, what, he's telling us what you must do to imitate God. When you pray, hello, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, everyone says shut your door. I think that talks about privacy, isn't it? Yeah. Shut your door. Pray to your father who is where? In the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now you know the genesis of miracles. See what happened? It's more important to God what you and I do behind those doors than what we do as if I say, before people. There are key words there. Are you with me? You, room, door, father, secret, reward, openly. I counted there, there are seven. Number of perfection. You, Room, door, father, secret, reward, openly. If you join, if you can, join each of these words together, you will understand clearly what it means to be a companion of Jesus. May I ask you, to reflect on each of these words. It will give you an understanding of where you are in the scheme of things of God about you. When I understood this, I began to know that I must never struggle with God. At times, there are roadblocks. But roadblocks are an epitome of success. Because I've never seen a man or woman that ever became successful that has not experienced good God. Have you seen somebody like that? So why is your own difference? 
I tell you. There are some battles in life that no matter how you fight, you cannot win them. Especially if God is the one you are fighting. Yes. Are you with me? I like to sing. Like to sing. Hold the hold the hold the hold. Don't sing yet. Let that sink in. Let that let it sink in. What is important is that this is our life now. If you don't understand what has confronted you, what I'm saying in effect is at times it's nothing that is confronting you. It's just that God does not want you to go that way. Paul said, if God be for us, who can be against, against us? And it's a question that has not been answered. You know why? Because you will answer it. I cannot answer it for you. But it's not for everyone. This one is not for everyone. It's only for some people that are special to God. And the sooner you understand it, the better for you. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was praying. He went to pray. He knew that his betrayers were around. They're about to come and arrest him. And you know the kind of prayer he prayed? He said, Father, if possible, take this copy away from me. But if it's your will, let your will be done. He submitted his will to God. Just because you submitted your will to God doesn't mean that you will not do anything. It means that God let your will be done in my life. And that's what he wants to hear from you. And once he hears that, he begins to lead you in his way. He said, narrow is the gate. Difficult is the way that leads to life. Only few finds it. But broad is the way. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many go in. They didn't find it. They don't need to find it. Just go in. They just go in. So we're talking to people that you are there, you know, this is a battle that I've been praying for and I want God to help me. But it appears that nothing is moving. God wants you to submit your will to him. So you pray, you'll be praying that, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. If you pray that kind of a prayer, the road will be open for you because God is the one that is there. You see, when God told that prophet, don't go and curse these people because they cannot be cursed. He wasn't listening. He kept, he kept at it. They bribed him. He kept at it. He wanted to go again. You know what I'm talking about? Right. And then he rode his house. He wanted to go. And then on his way, the donkey saw the sword. <laughs> this one wants to kill me. And the donkey just saw, and the man fell down. Why did you? And he, he stroked him. So why are you beating me now? Can you see the water, what is in front of me? What I'm saying, in effect, is the prayer of submission will accelerate your progress farther than what you can ever imagine in life. If that is your prayer, Lord, know my will, but let your will be done.
If you spend time together with someone every day, what do you think will happen to you individually? What impacts do you think will be made in your life? If you spend time together with your wife or husband, if you spend time together with your family, if you spend time together with God, because today's title is be a companion of Jesus. If you spend time together with God in prayer on a daily basis, if you spend time together with God reading the Bible on a daily basis, do you know what the impact of it? I think, number one, it will build trust. If husband and wife spend time together on a daily basis, what do you think will happen? Will they not be able to trust each other better? Number two, it will strengthen relationship. It will give assurance of safety in that relationship. It will promote friendship. What else can it do? Think on it and add it to your own book. These are the things you are missing when you don't spend time together with the Lord. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, the first part. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, the first part. A friend loves sometime. Hello? It's in your Bible. A friend loves at... Say that again. You don't sound believing. A friend loves... Do you have a friend? I believe spending time together with your companion is going to establish that long-term friendship. What happens when the husband and the wife don't spend time together? What happens when you don't spend time together with your companion? Is the opposite of what you will get if you spend time together. And look at that by extension. If you spend time together with the Lord, you will see that this Lord, this relationship will help you to build a lasting trust with God. No one can just kill you no one can send put you to kill you. Who is your companion? Jesus. A friend loves at say that you believe. A friend loves at if Jesus is your friend, will it now dump you when you are in trouble? No, no, no. Some don't believe that. And because they don't believe that. It shows when they have problems. Who do they run to? Many people don't run to God. They run to their friends. They put God last. They don't even come to their minds for. And that shows you who your companion is. A friend loves at all times. Another translation of the Bible says for that one, it said, a friend is a friend at all times. A friend is a friend at all times. Do you have a friend in Jesus? You know that song? What a friend we have in Jesus. These days, we even sing songs. We don't take time to think on the lyrics, the meaning of the song. And that's where the strength comes from. A friend is a friend. And sometimes, all times, there was a woman, a widow, who won the king that does not fear God nor man to her friend for, for her. Remember the story. And this woman went at a very hot side and kept knocking. 
help me. This man said, even though I have not fear God, no man, but because of her persistence, amen. That shows who your companions are. It's not just coming to church. It's about relationship with God that assures you of safety in the time of trouble. In that dwelling, in the secret place of the most high, Lullaby under the shadow of the Almighty. In that dwelling, in the secret place of the most high, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will sing of the Lord in my refuge. And my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And I will say of the Lord, in my refuge, and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. That's Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2. Words are very powerful. Even the traditional man, the voodoo man, uses word. Even the wicked people use his word. But my Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Nothing was created without the word. So the more worthy you are, the more the victory you will get. The more worded you are, the more the victory you will get in life. Let God be your companion. Spend time reading the Bible. Out of the eater came something sweet. Whatever you are going through, whatever is confronting your life that is of evil, you are going to win at the end. Amen. Amen? So don't let your heart be troubled. Don't focus on the enemy. Focus on God. Moses came to Jesus, to God. When the enemy was trying, when, when the enemy came again in Exodus 14, and the people were crying to Moses, and Moses was crying to God. God said, why are you crying to me? What's in your hand? Amen? God has given you and I the weapons to fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. Everyone say mighty. Oh Lord. The way you say it doesn't, doesn't sound like you believe. Say mighty. Mighty in God. So they pull it down. And every struggle, you will win. I said you will win. There are some of the benefits you will get if you become a companion of Jesus from today. Will you become a companion of Jesus? Yes. That is the secret place. That is the power. Because when you and I pray in the secret, we shut our door. <laughs> There's no other power greater than that one. See, you shut the door. Don't, don't, don't fight. Don't say anything to the enemy. Don't worry. Don't let them make your blood pressure to work. Don't come worth it. Hello, it doesn't work. That's what the devil wants to get from you. It's a master trick, trickster, isn't it? He wants to waste our energy. But don't give him. Rather spend your energy in the right way. Shut the door. Come to my face, shut the door. That's it. Don't give him attention. Go on your knees, on your knees and pray. Continuously pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will do what? That shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Matthew 26, very quickly. Let's read 40 to 46. In fact, I don't need to read it. Matthew 26, 40 to 46. Jesus went to pray and took the disciples with him. 
And he asked Peter, James, and John. Took them near to where he was. And he said to them, watch for me, for those, for, because he knew some people are coming to arrest him. But each time he came to see Peter, James, and John, he found them sleeping. And at the third time, Jesus could not be bothered anymore. He said, okay, guys, rise up. Let us go. My betrayer has come. What is the lesson here? The lesson here is that Jesus, our Lord, showed us how to spend time in prayer with God. Especially in troubled times. What does Psalm 46 say? Psalm 46 verse 1. Psalm 46 verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A sometime help. <laughs> A very present help. Everybody say to me together. A very present help in. So the times of trouble will come. It will come. But do not let your heart be. You know you can be in trouble and get out of trouble. Yes. Especially if your heart is in God. Not in trouble. But the devil wants your heart to be where? In the trouble. Mm -mm. Not me. Big old. No. You just say, it's not me. Look, put your heart where? In the Lord. It is true. I might sound funny, but it is true. But this is what the devil is using to cheat us. We don't spend time enough. We go to prayer. Rather, we are busy. And one day somebody told me, don't be busy. Because each letter is that word busy. Is a plus to the devil. Very under satanic yoke. Are you with me? When you hear that I'm busy, busy what? You don't you busy, don't you can't read the Bible. Busy, you can't pray. Are you not under satanic yoke? When you don't have a companion in prayer, it becomes difficult to pray. And that is why a lot of people can't find time, don't find time, will not find time in prayer. Make your companion, make God your companion and your prayer will be easy. Amen? Amen. Because if, when you don't have a companion, you don't do something. But now, if you make God your companion, a realistic one, a trusted one, it will make you to pray, won't it? John chapter 14, verse 23. John 14, 23. Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my Word. How many people love God here? Interestingly, everyone, there's no one that will say he doesn't love God. But look at that word that Jesus said. If anyone loves me, what will he do? Do you keep God's word? That is, do you remember his word? Do you practice his word? If you don't practice his word, you have just lied that you love God. Because if you love God, what will you do? You will remember his word. If somebody says you are just going to die, you see what I will do. They threaten you. If you love God, what will you do? Keep God's word. Don't keep the word of the, the one that threatens you. Hello? Hello? Is it true today? Don't keep the word of the one that wants to torment you. Keep the word of the one that wants to make you free. And this is where companionship starts from. Love God. When you love God, you will remember his word. Amen? You know, 
One of the reasons why there are marital divorces, separation and whatever, is because of unfaithfulness, isn't it? And the reason for the unfaithfulness is because each other partner, it takes you to tango, either of them or both of them forgets what the other one says. But if there's a love relationship, will you forget? Even if your job takes you away, miles away from your husband or your, your wife, just because of separation of that for a moment, would that make you to go and join forces together with another person? No. Why? Because you remember the word of your spouse. Hello? So without love, there is no trust. Without love, you cannot keep the word of your partner. And where you cannot keep the word of your partner, what happens? You make yourself vulnerable. Needless to ask if people that are married in this church love each other. Do you love your wife? Do you love your husband? Uh, no one is answering me. Let me ask again. Wives, do you love your husband? Yes. Husband, do you love your wife? Yes. Yes. If you love your wife, even if they have gone to be with the Lord, <laughs> if you love your husband, even if they have gone to be with the Lord, you know that when they have gone to be with the Lord, what keeps you going is what? Their word. Amen? Their word that you have spent together in your companionship keeps you going. Hello? Words are very powerful. And that's what we get when we spend time together in companionship. That's why it was easy for those people to see Peter and John. They took note of them and they know that they are being with Jesus. The words you remember of your spouse are precious. Very precious, not only after they have gone, but even right now. Everyone say right now. Because it's what you do right now that will be your posterity. It's simple with the church, isn't it? After I've gone, church on the road will continue. Because of what I've been taught there. And you might be one of the leaders that will hear that. The senior pastor has said. The Bible says, do not remove the ancient landmarks. You cannot. Because if you remove them, there's trouble. I want to round up, please. The words you remember of your spouse are very precious. And you got these words from companionship. The same thing when you spend time with the Lord. When you become a companion of Jesus, our title for today, when you have become a companion of Jesus, you cannot forget his word. Even in troubled times. But devil is a very bad devil. He wants to catch us on our ways. He knows that in troubled times, many of us are vulnerable. So he comes not when things are pleasurable. Most cases, he comes when things are hard. Although we know that he came to David when things are pleasurable. And David went to sin. But what is important is that you and I must be watchful, especially when we, when we are companions of Jesus. Jesus continued in that John 14. He said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and will come to him and make our homes with it. That is the assurance of salvation we're talking about. If God be in you, what can the devil do? But you see, 
I think problem is that mentally we say nothing, right? We say nothing, but in the in the practical sense, we are troubled. But God doesn't want you to be troubled. That is why you need to build this relationship, this companionship with Jesus. Are you a companion of Jesus? Be sincere. Are you a companion of Jesus? If you can sincerely and honestly answer that question, God will take you to the next level. Be a companion of Jesus. Let me read Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 11. Can you project that to me for me, please? Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 11. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Who are we talking about? Adam and Eve. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Why would they hide? Next verse. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? See, when you and I willingly go a different way, to that of God. It is called sin. And sin will make you exposed. When did they become naked? When they sin. When you are exposed, you become vulnerable to attack by Satan. And the only solution is to repent from sin. That God, the covering of God can come back on you. Think of that. Unfaithfulness is one reason that can affect a companionship. If that companionship, if there's unfaithfulness in a companionship, it will make each of the people there, partners in that companionship, become exposed. When you allow your faithfulness to drift from that of your spouse, your complaint become vulnerable. And why is this? When it becomes vulnerable, these are the signposts, you know, you spend less time together. You begin to spend less time together. Because now your time is being replaced by something else. And what will happen? Your relationship will suffer. Are you hearing me? Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived. Bad, com bad complaint will corrupt good morals. Now that was one translation says, don't fool yourselves. Bad friends will destroy him. So let's look at one of the reasons why some of us do not have a companionship with Jesus is because of bad people. Friends. They keep pulling us. They keep pulling us, even though we know that God doesn't want us to do what they're doing. Where does the box stop? Hello? Where does the box stop? It has to stop with you. I want to stop the prayer now. I want to, I want to stop the preaching. But the Bible makes us understand in Amos 3.3, it says, can two walk together except they agree? 
Another translation says, do two work together unless they have agreed to do so. So it is down to you and I to agree to be a companion of Jesus. You have to be intentional about it. The children have to be intentional about being a companion with Jesus. The youth have to be intentional about being a companion with Jesus. Their parents need to be intentional because you are the example. You are the teachers of your family. It's what your children see both daddy and mommy do on a daily basis, whether consciously or indirectly, they will do it. So we have to be intentional about our following Jesus. Let us pray. You cannot become a mother just because you are a woman. You have to be intentional to become a mother. And this is the reason why some of us are not doing what God wants because we are not intentional about doing about it. I want us to pray. Whoever you are, whatever you do, you can hear me. Let's commit ourselves to God. Jesus said, if anyone desire to follow me, it has, you have to desire it to follow Jesus. Then let him deny himself. How do I deny myself? By submitting myself, submitting my will to God. Since I now know that I can never win when I fight with God. Why don't I just agree with him, submit my will to him, and say, God, let your will be done. Please pray. Wherever you are, whatever you do, just commit yourself to God and ask him. You, are, you might be the wife, you might be the husband, but everything hinges on the agreement of both of you. Through this message, you must have seen the problem that is affecting your relationship. Now, at what point do you start making amendment? In your relationship with God, you see where the enemy is, as, as, is creeping in because you don't spend time to pray together. You don't spend time to study the word of God together. Why? You are busy at the expense of your happiness. Where does the box stop? Why don't you ask him to help you? Maybe that's why you are in church today. Why don't you ask him to help you? Because it's doable. God can still help you. You know it is the right thing to read the Bible on a daily basis, but you just don't have time because you're too tired. At the expense of what? Why don't you just ask him to help you? Are you really a companion of Jesus? You said you are born again, but what is new in your life? Your lifestyle is still the same. Your friends are still the same. You still use the swear word, the F word. So what has become born again in your life? Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sow, the same he will reap. Why don't you ask him, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Help me. I want to be born again. I want to turn a new leaf. Good thing can come out of you, you know. That is why you are here. Your destiny matters to God. The enemy cannot stop you. Why don't you ask him to save you? Ask him the Lord to save you. Ask Jesus to save you. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. 
and sin. That you will promise him, you will repent. You will turn around, turn away from sin and follow Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Begin to ask him to give you a new heart. To give you his own heart and his own spirit. To make a better person out of him. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. And all things have become new. You are new. You are new. If you have asked God to forgive you, you are forgiven. Don't live in condemnation anymore. For there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Begin to thank him. Let him write your name in the book of life. Those who follow after the spirit and do not walk after the flesh. They do not follow after the flesh. For the law of the spirit, the law of life of the spirit has made us free from the law of sin. Death. Lord will bless you. Whatever he tells me to do, I will do. Your marriage will not be destroyed. Your life will not be destroyed. Your destiny will not be destroyed. Your vision will come through. I said your vision will come through. As we serve the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy and anointed name, we have prayed. Amen.